Hello, it is 22nd of October 2012 and welcome to another issue of the Health Research Report. Today we're going to start off with something really interesting. It's in regards to watercress. What's so cool about watercress? Well, if I told you that women that just took 80 grams of watercress per day, which would be close to about almost a salad, two and a half ounces, for four weeks resulted in seven out of 11 of them showing improvements in their wrinkles. Just four weeks. Now on top of that, one woman even saw a 39% improvement in her wrinkles at the age of 53 after four weeks. This is what the study said. This was done by Dr. Uh, Dr. Sarah Schenker. All right. They go back like this. Watercress, for example, has been used for wrinkles and skin care con internally for eating it, so to say, from the ancient Romans to the Egyptians onward. They had anecdotal evidence in regards to being beneficial for the skin, but they weren't able to confirm it. So what they utilized was what was called a visa test. What's a visa test? A visa test is simply this. It looks at, the, uh, looks at a few different um, checkpoints, so to say, or subsurface readings. In their case, it was wrinkles, brown spots, UV spots, red areas, and something called porphyrins, which I know I'm mispronouncing, which measures the levels of bacteria in the skin itself. These were the results. And this study just came out, I'd say, what was it, 13th of October? At least it came out in the press. 10 out of 11 saw a positive improvement in their skin. 7 out of 11 saw an improvement in their wrinkles. 8 out of 11 saw improvements in the texture of the skin. Remember, this is only 4 weeks. 9 out of 11 saw improvement in their pores. And remember, the ages range between 23 and 58. 5 out of 11 saw an improvement in the wrinkles. 8 out of 11 so an improvement in the bacteria content of their skin. Five out of 11 saw improvement in the brown spots. And three out of 11 saw improvements in the UV spots. Four weeks, just under a month, at about two and a half ounces of watercress per day, which is an incredible benefit just by consuming just a simple green plant. On top of that, the majority of women also saw an improvement in their energy levels. So something to think about if you're concerned with your skin or look about skin health. That just, I mean, that's just incredible. Out of just about two and a half ounces of watercress per day. All right. Now, another one interesting article in regards to health, and we often may call it precognition. In these cases, the scientists called it something called presentiment. And that's one of the words we utilized for it, and it was titled "Can Your Body Sense Future Events." without any external clue. And this basically um, had to deal more with, this was a study that came out of Northwestern uh, University. But they looked at 26 published studies between 1978 and 2010. And they confirmed this thing called presentiment, which existed. They couldn't quite figure it out. But in their words, it said, wouldn't it be amazing if our bodies prepared us for future events that could be very important to us, and there's no clue about what these events will be. Well, it turns out the body can. An the example they gave was this. A person played a video game at work while wearing heads, for example, can't hear when the boss is coming around the corner. But, they said, our analysis suggests that if you were in tune to your body, you might be able to detect these anticipatory if I pronounce it properly, changes between 2 and 10 seconds beforehand. And close your video game. Obviously, a lot of people have been looking at things at work and basically saw someone come around the corner or did not see or anticipated, and they closed things up ahead of time. You may even have a chance to open up the spreadsheet you are supposed to be working on. And if you were lucky, you could do all this before your boss entered the room. And they called this phenomenon presentiment, where somehow they can't figure it out, but you know it's going to happen ahead of time your subconscious or something. And they said they like to call this skill anomalous anticipatory activity, meaning they can't quite figure it out. In other words, the phenomenon is anomalous. Some, anomalous. some scientists argue because we can't explain using it with present-day understanding of how biology works. Uh, because 
through explanations related to what's called recent quantum biological findings, could this potentially make sense? It's anticipatory because it does seem to predict future physiological changes in response to an important event without any known clues in its activity because it consists of changes in carbon pulmonary, skin, and nervous system. Meaning what they're doing is before an event occurs, your whole body is preparing for it, even though there are no clues that it's going to happen. At least none that could be detected by the scientist. Know when a person is going to walk around a corner, open a room, uh, point a gun at somebody, and so on and so forth. Yeah, the true prize an incredible military application on top of that. But otherwise, it's something really to think about if you're in tune with your body. And now, we go back to so simply something called vitamin C. And the reason I brought up the vitamin C, because this is an old article from 2009. What I'd like to be able to do is go back at least a couple of years to things that possibly got missed over. The reason vitamin C is because this is in regards to diabetes. And ironically, if a person's a diabetic, vitamin C really is a very important nutrient that they should look at adjuncting into their daily routine. Why? Because of this. And what they looked at, and this was printed in the Journal of Clinical Endocrinology and Metabolism, is that what vitamin C did, it stopped a lot of the damage to the blood vessels and other cells in the body that usually sugars have when they go up and down or are poorly controlled. So, what they ended up utilizing, they did an intravenous and they did higher dosages. They know the vitamin C works. They just can't figure out at what level it does work. But they do know one thing. It requires more than basically what you're just consuming from your typical average American daily diet, which unfortunately in the United States is around 30 to 40 milligrams for a large portion of people that are not supplementing. So, they also found too, when your sugars go up and down, your cells kind of get traumatized. And so what happens is the cells will continue creating damage even way past sugars being brought under control. They found out that the vitamin C returned those cells, the memory of those cells, back to normal. So they stopped going haywire and breaking things up. So something to look at. It's a well-published study in the Journal of Endocrinology and Metabolism confirmed that antioxidants do make a difference in helping diabetics offset a lot of possible negative consequences later on in the future. So, if your health is concerned, not a bad thing to add. All right? Well, that's it. I'm done with this typical this show for the day and hope to see you soon in a few more days. Thank you.